Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training with .NET New Corporation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use skins and containers within DNN. Now, first off, we're going to kind of give you an overview of what skins and containers are. And then we'll go into a .NET Nuke website where we've previously installed a skin and container package. You can find the installation process in one of our previous videos in the .NET Nuke video library. Then we're going to take that skin and container package and apply it to our, our portal and then adjust some of the individual pages on our website with various skin layouts. So from an overview perspective, you can think of a skin in .NET Nuke as providing the layout and the look and feel of a website. In this particular slide, we have just a very basic kind of wireframe that we might try to apply a skin or create a skin that would uh, fit the needs for this. In our next slide here, you can see we've started to substitute in some various elements for that wireframe. So using dynamic elements in .NET Nuke, we can provide a placement for the logo. We can provide the current date. We can provide a register and a login link, perhaps a navigation bar, and then some copyright information down at the footer. Now the grayed out section in the middle for a content area is going to be highlighted in the next few slides. Your content area is going to consist of what are known as panes. Panes are locations in .NET Nuke where you can place a module. Every skin is going to have at least one pane called content pane. Beyond that, it's up to the skin developer or designer to create as many panes as they would wish to have on a site. So you could have a two pane layout or a three pane layout or as many panes as you would like. Like I said, the minimum is one. Beyond that, it's up to the, to the designer or the developer. Now, the layout we've got demonstrated here is just a very basic three column layout from a flexibility perspective, you can create panes that stretch across the page. You can limit them in width. You can control their positioning through the use of style sheets and CSS. Now, within a pane in .NET Nuke, you're going to place a module. A module is actually going to provide the content or the functionality for your website. This is a very basic approach of just putting some lorem ipsum text, placeholder text into a single pane, into a single module. Well, on the next screen, we're going to start talking about containers. A container wraps around a module. And I'll just assume that the previous page for the content had this image and this text, even though we've changed text from page or slide to slide here. What we've done is we've wrapped that content in, in a container. Now, a container will typically provide a module title. It may highlight that title with some sort of a background or a different font. It will also have the ability to wrap the content itself with a border. And in, in our case, this demonstration has a border around it with a slight gradient in the background for that particular content. So the container wraps around the content on a page or the content within a module. And here in this particular slide, we've just kind of put everything together into a single .NET Nuke page with a single module. It has a very basic title there highlighted in that, that off-color blue and then the content for a module being displayed within the middle of that container. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a .NET Nuke 5.6.0 professional website. Now everything we talk about in this particular video applies to both .NET Nuke Community Edition and Professional Edition, as well as the Enterprise Edition of DNN. So here in this particular .NET Nuke website, we have our standard home page, which has three modules on it. We have some additional pages that have been created. Page one has some child pages underneath it. The test page has a very basic page with three modules added to it. Now, there's, there isn't any content added to those modules yet, but we'll add some content and play with the content in a future video. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to apply a skin that we've previously installed to our .NET Nuke website. And we're going to do that by going to the admin site settings page. Now from the site settings page, we're going to go into the appearance section. We're going to skip over a couple of the appearance options. We're going to go straight into the portal skin and portal container option. Well, what we can do here is we can define the skin, the default layout, the default look and feel that every page on our .NET Nuke website is going to utilize. Now at the page level, we're going to be able to override this skin and choose a specific skin, a specific layout, a specific look and feel per page but we can define a default one in case we don't want to go page by page. 
So what we're going to do here is choose our portal skin. Now there's two options here, a host skin or a site skin. Well, a host skin is any skin that's been installed and available to every portal within .NET Nuke. A site-specific skin is one that's only available to this particular portal. Well, in our demonstration video where we installed our skin, we installed it as a host skin. So in our drop-down list here, we're going to find a list of all the available skins. And the skin package that we installed in the previous video was called EcoZany. The EcoZany skin package has three different layouts available. There's a layout called admin page, one called home page, and one called inner page. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to choose the default skin to be this inner page layout. And then we'll go to the home page of our website and choose the home page skin specifically for the home page. The portal container defines the default container for every module within our .NET Nuke portal. So you can see we have a number of different containers available here. Some of those are part of the EcoZany package that was previously installed. So we can come in here and choose a specific container. Now you can see there are a variety of containers here. They all provide a different look and feel. So we're just going to go ahead and stick with this green title big to start out with. So we've defined our portal skin and our portal container. We can also define what's known as an edit skin. In prior versions of .NET Nuke, previous to version 5, that was known as the admin skin. So what we can go ahead and do here is choose the EcoZany admin page. Now typically an edit skin or an admin skin will be a skin that just has a single content pane that stretches the full width of the page. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a different container for this one as well. So you can see when we go into the edit or the admin view, then we'll see the different, uh, we'll see a different container wrapped around our module. So we'll go ahead and click on update to save our site settings. And once those settings have been saved, we can go ahead and navigate back to the home page and start to see that our skin is now being applied to the website and the overall look and feel of our website has changed. So if we go to the home page here, you can see the look and feel of the site has changed quite a bit. This particular skin doesn't work with the logo that we have currently selected on our site very well. It, it has a very fixed height and the logo is a little bit too big for that. So it has some wrapping and, and issues where it's being hidden. In a future video, we'll see how we can change the logo of our site. But if we navigate to the various pages on our site, you'll see that all of the pages are now using this new skin. And they have a container here that has this green title being displayed. Now from a layout perspective, we can change to the layout mode and see what this particular skin provides us. This skin provides us a number of different panes. We have a pane called top right pane, header content pane, content pane, middle pane, one, two, and three, left pane, right pane, left pane two, right pane two, and if we scroll down, we see that's the extent of the panes. Well, in the previous skin that we were using called Minimal XGP Pro, which is the default skin in .NET New Professional, we had a top pane, a left pane, a content pane, a right pane, and a bottom pane. So the Minimal, I'm sorry, so the EcoZany skin package provides us a number of different layout options with different panes available. Now we're using the inner page layout on all of these pages. And if we go to page one, we'll see the same thing. If we go to the home page, we'll see that it is also using that particular layout. Now make one item or make note of one item here. On the home page, we previously had three modules installed and they were all in the bottom pane. You can see they are now moved to the content pane. That's because the bottom pane does not exist in this new layout. So if there's a, a pane missing when you change skins, everything will default to the content pane. Now what we can go ahead and do to the home page is we can change the current skin that's being applied to the home page. So we're going to go to the current page option. I'm going to choose the skin option here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose EcoZany home page. So we're basically saying on the home page, we want to use a very specific home page skin as opposed to the site's default skin, which is inner page. So you can see the layout has changed a little bit. We have a top right pane. We do still have a header content pane, a content pane. And then we have middle pane one, two, and three. We no longer have the additional panes that were down below on that previous layout. If we switch into edit mode or view mode, we can see what this impact has on our existing .NET Nuke website. 
So this is just a brief overview of how we can go in and start changing skins and containers within .NET Nuke. In a future video, we'll deal with actually changing a container on a module and at the page level. So for more information about our .NET Nuke training, I'd encourage you to check out our training page under the resources tab at .NET you can find a listing of free videos as well as an upcoming schedule of our webinar based training and information about our custom on site and online training options. Again, this was Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.